If you were to ask an athlete what he does on a daily basis, I bet you he's not going to mention Olympics, ever. He's thinking about the daily practice and the things he does every single day. It's been super intense this morning. We've been brainstorming with uh, Mandy on different topics. We've got the notebook and the earphone here. And it's been a whole session that took like four hours or more. Yeah, four hours. So I'm going to go grab some lunch. I'm super hungry. And this afternoon is going to be time to explore. And I want to do some backtesting for fun because I have a couple of things going on in the academy, some script that people want to see. And I'll be doing a session of backtesting, so running different script and enjoying Ho Chi Minh City, which is always a good combination. Work and fun. So let's go. This morning when I left for breakfast, there was a big uh, scooter accident. Two of them crashed together. And as I left like 10 seconds later, I'll probably have got hit by one of the scooters. So that was close. That's why you realize you're pretty lucky sometimes. And you can count on your blessings every single day. But the first time I see a big accident or a big crash in Ho Chi Minh City, you gotta be careful. There are a lot of people outside today for the weekend, taking pictures and stuff, probably for the festival. A lot of people are dressed like uh, in Vietnamese costume, but it's really interesting to see. For one time, I'm not the only one with a camera, which is pretty interesting to see. I don't know what that place is, so I might as well go inside and see what it's what it's about. That's what I'm doing. A lot of people though here, so. This is probably the post office. Not much to see there, although it's kind of beautiful. The architecture is great, but I'll have to sit there a long time. So let's keep walking and see what's around here. Funny thing is, I came to this area multiple times, but I always find something new to look at or like a new building I didn't see before. And so that's a really cool area. They're building a lot of stuff around here, it's pretty incredible. Like, there's a lot of places that are kind of closed, so you have to go around. But they're building like crazy things. So, in a couple of years, I think what you mean is going to be completely different. After crossing half the street, I got stuck in the middle of an intersection. But it gives a pretty cool view, look at that. There's like a big building right here. That's a pretty nice view in the middle of the road, so I like it. Now let's try to cross, but it's really dangerous. Again, there's a big contrast between the buildings in Ho Chi Minh City. Some are great, like big 50-something floor with a helicopter pad and everything. And next to it are like small buildings that are quite old and where people live in. So really big contrast. Uh, because the heat is kind of killing me right now and it's getting really hot with these 34 something degrees Celsius, I'm gonna head for some back testing. Mm -hmm. 
I'm flexible in some aspect, but in terms of workplace, I'm not flexible. I have to find a place that's good for work, which is what I did this afternoon. Came to this place, this nice hotel, and did a lot of back testing, which is great. As I showed you guys in the past, I have this thing, this kind of hard disk connected to my computer, which is allowing me to have MetaTrader installed with Windows, all that stuff. And that's how I'm able to back this with MetaTrader 4, and it works fine. It's pretty good. Sometimes I ask traders, especially novice traders, like beginners, what they do on a daily basis to achieve their goal of becoming full-time traders. And what they say usually first is, well, I trade. I try to place trades in the market because I want to make money. And that's re not really how you become better. I think really often as traders, we focus a lot on the doing part, which is like performing, being in the market. That would be the same thing as what an athlete would do when it goes to a simple competition where you perform against other people. And we as traders kind of forget that we have to practice. What I did today with running some back testing with my computer and stuff on my Trader 4, this is what we would call kind of testing edges and trying to see what edge you could have in the market. That's not how you become better. That's only gonna help you kind of see alternatives. That's a little bit like if you were bringing a couple of engineers at Apple to think about new product. And that, that's exactly what I did today. I looked at some opportunities in the market. I didn't practice, I didn't become a better trader for that. And that's why you need to have this practice on a daily basis, especially if you're at a point where you didn't reach your trading goal or your income goal. You, need to, you still need to practice because you're still not at the level where you want to be. And it's not by trading more or by placing more trade or by trying your strategies more that you will be able to trade full time or that you will be able to reach your goal faster because you will be lacking this practice part. And that is where back this thing manually really comes in. In my opinion, if you see the candles ahead of time, that's not practice. That's looking back at chart, that's reviewing the charts, but that's not practicing. Practicing means placing trades. And not many softwares allow you to do this, other than Forex Tester and TradingView. Now, one of the things I don't really like about TradingView is the fact that you cannot really go back far in time. Like, there's only so much data that you can use in TradingView, and that's kind of a problem sometimes. So I don't want to necessarily plug Forex Tester 3 here, but they do have this Chinese New Year promotion right now. But the point is not to buy the software. The point is that you need to have some sort of practice where every day you will be practicing. And the easiest way is going to be to go back on the chart. But the other thing you can do, and this is what very few people do, I don't understand why, is to do what you would call a scenario analysis. So it's kind of pushing your strategy to the wall and asking yourself questions about it. What would you do if? That's the big thing. She came up with a few scenarios of three key things that could happen. What would you do if a news happened and you're uncertain? What would you do if you see an opposite signal? What would you do if you forget to place the stop loss? What would you do if, and you keep answering those questions. And the more you do this, the more you practice because somehow at some point, like these situations are gonna happen where you don't really know, it's not really part of your plan but you didn't think about it. What happens if you don't think about it first is you're gonna be at a point where you're stuck and you might make a stupid mistake because you're under pressure and you don't really know how to, how to act. So you want to plan this in advance. And we cannot plan for all scenarios. Although being around traders, they are going to help you and they're going to tell you like, at one point this and this happened to me and uh, I did this and that. And that's how you learn. But other than that, you need to do it for yourself. So I would really recommend that you do this and that you try to prepare for what you're not prepared for so that if it happens, you know what to do and you're able to act quickly. And if you need to go back and do some back testing on your what if scenario, like what if an opposite setup happens, am I supposed to exit or am I supposed to stay in the trade? You could do some back testing on that. You could go back and see what would be better, what would be the best option in that case. And that's something you can always improve on. I'm gonna go grab some dinner because I'm hungry right now and there's a place I wanna check out, so let's get there right away. everything inside and it looks really good. We'll try it out. Pretty good. It's spicy too so 